Hi everyone, Emma here. I wanted to show you um, one technique for bezeling a Rivoli and I pause there because these are 14 millimeters but this is a 12 millimeter resin one that I just did an unboxing of. So I want to first of all show you how amazing <laughs> the, the resin ones are um, and you know what they're great for practice they look amazing. You can use them on bracelets or jewelry that you want to wear every day that you don't care about, that like that you don't care if it gets dirty or dinged or stuff like that. I I wouldn't want to wear my um Swarovski's uh, you know for everyday use unless you're not you know, doing dishes or something like that. So let's uh, take a look at what we have and what you need. This is a really simple, simple design. So I'll show you the back. So you do need bugle beads for this. Let me adjust this camera here. So you do need bugle beads for this. These are uh, six millimeter bugle beads. And I got mine uh, at the craft shop online really super cheap big bags of 250 gram bags that I will probably never use so I will most likely do when I have my next garage sale have these available to you for like a dollar for 10 grams so yeah they're super cheap but uh, you can get some uh, so these are um, Miyuki slenders so I think you could probably test it out with other thicker ones. Um, I also, I did some bezeling of chatons, which are like eight millimeter and the, um, the chaton itself. And I used the three millimeter bugles on those guys and that worked. So let's go ahead and see if we can, I was going to just test it out first. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it in front of you guys. You can, we can figure out how it works. And I will be doing videos for this design. They're all super easy. They're just variations of the same thing. This one's kind of cool. Turned out super amazing, like a flower. Um, and, that, and this one's just like a, a neat, interesting round. So yeah, once you get the kind of basis of how it works, it's really easy. You can create your own designs. So, and it's, they're super fast. So we'll start out by, you need um, 11 OC beads. And I thought since we have this beautiful kind of mint opal that we would test out the, um, the uh, sea foam green 11 oc beads so you pick up an 11 o a bugle an 11 o a bugle an 11 o a bugle an 11 o and a bugle so that is what you have that's the basis of it so you're going to bring this down to the bottom of your line i am using six pound fire line um, i would recommend four pound you it you don't want it too like rigid your line um, but i ran out of the four pound they don't sell it here it's really expensive to buy it online so i buy it at the um the fishing store <laughs> The Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> They're so funny when I go in there. First of all, they want to know if there's anything they can help me with, right? <laughs> yeah, I need some beading line. <laughs> huh? And then at the checkout, they're like, did you find everything? I'm like, no, you got you, you need some more four pound and you need some more. <laughs> I don't know why they have the cashiers ask that question they do that at Walmart too did you find everything you need no I didn't do you think you could help me <laughs> they're not going to leave the cashier their cash register to go look for an item for you it's like why one of those policies in theory it's a great idea but so I'm putting a 
uh, double knot here. And you know what? I had left, I didn't tighten this super tight. And um, that's just kind of finding your own kind of um, tension because I find sometimes I go a bit too tight. And then when you're bezeling, I'll show you the bottom of the crystal. So you see the bottom of the crystal is beveled and you want it to sit nicely in your this little square or diamond, um, kind of like a cage. But if you have it too tight and it's like weird shape or whatever, it's not going to sit nicely. So, so I'm actually looking at this and this, even though this is a 12 millimeter, it is going to work out because the idea is you don't see the bugles. So once we add our embellishment, it should work out. So take a look. So at this point, you can clip this thread. Careful not to clip the other. I've done that. <laughs> like that. And we're going to take that and not Actually, I might leave the knot there. I'll tell you why. Because you don't want to clog the hole of your bugle. So I'm just getting away from that knot. So the knot can stay there in the corner. It's not going to, you're not going to see it. Okay, so now we want to go through this 11-0. And let me move this so you can have the mat in the background see what I'm talking about so yeah it, to do with the um, the fire line I pulled off about 12 inches you don't need that much it doesn't take a lot so now you have this bead here you're going to add three to this so you're coming out this side you're going to go in the opposite side of that bead let's enlarge this go through here like that so you're going to create a little diamond pattern with your beads so you're going to go through the next bugle and the next bead and you're going to do that all the way around add three to each one so one two three like that coming out here going in here and you can go through everything at once Let's get rid of that. it's getting caught in my line and you don't have to worry about the shape of this yet we can fix that later so now we're going to go through the next 11 0 like that And as you pull that in, it tightens the previous one that you did. And again, find your tension. It doesn't have to be super tight. So I'll go through. Coming out this side, we're going to go in the opposite side. And we're going to pass through everything. Like that. One. There we go. We're picking up three 11 O's coming out this side we're gonna go in the opposite side and let me make sure this is in focus so here's another thing to consider when you're doing this um, some designs suggest that when you go through your bugles um, or when you go around this cage that you've created is to skip the seed bead so that the bugles will fall down and actually we could probably do that for this one this design seeing that we have a smaller um, rivoli so let me so 
we're going to go through the bugle. Just hang on to everything. Okay. We're going to skip the seed bead, go through the next bugle. And you'll see what I mean. It pops them down or pops the bead up. Let's get the, the thread is hooked around the bead. And this thread is, like I said, is a bit rigid, so that's probably why it did that. So let me, there, kind of popped it up a bit. It's very slight, so here you can see the difference. This one's down and that one's up. We'll just go through the bugle. So this step you don't have to do, but... Skip the next 11 0 and go through the bugle. Hang on to everything and just kind of pull your bead up, bring your thread down. See if I can get that thread down. there and it makes it it looks a little more uniform because these even though these 11 O's are nice and uniform they are kind of different shapes so let's go through this so this is where the knot is so I'm trying to not poke the knot there get in there it's a little bit tight And that thread is, let's see if we can get that. There. Kind of. Kind of, sort of. Okay, there we go. So you can see now it's getting super tight, but it actually made that smaller. So this is the last one here. And I apologize. It's uh, I um I do keto and intermittent fasting. And let me see what time it is. It's 4:30 in the afternoon and I haven't eaten since last night at about 8 o'clock, so starting to get a bit shaky. There we go. Look at that. That's awesome. Okay. So now our threads coming out of here, we want to kind of go around the bead and bring our thread up to here, but I don't want my thread showing here. So I'm going to go in the opposite direction and we'll just flip our work over. So we're kind of going to hide the thread in through these side beads. So just like that. So I'm flipping. There we are. So now let's bring this through the side one and through the top one. Now we're ready for the next step. So now we are going to add, just make sure I've got everything correct. Okay. It, it's so simple that I'm even questioning my own work. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to add, I believe, six. Let's test it out here. Four, five, six. And I only say that because um, this is a smaller one, so I don't know if we need six. So we're coming out of this bead here. We are going to go into the top bead. So if you see, this is a diamond shape. This is your top bead. So we're going to come in through here. Like that. And so once we, when we push these guys up, it creates that bridge and we're going to do that all the way across. So we'll pick up six. So it looks like it fits the six. 
So coming out of this one, we're going to go through this top one here and kind of tuck it up a bit. So pick up our next six. Okay. Coming out of here, we're going to go in here. And we're going to pick up the last six. Like that. We're coming out of this top one. We're going to go into this top one. And you can go through the others. So actually, you know, I'm going to do it separately so you can see what I'm doing. It'll make more sense to you. Okay, so there is our cage. That's the beginning of it. So we can pull that a bit snug like that and set our stone in there and oops, it will um, like adjust a little better it takes a little finagling at first okay so now what we want to do is we want to like just go through this six here to begin with actually we're not going to go through all six we're going to go through four so what we want to do is we want to leave two on each end so at the beginning and the end but because this one's our first one we're going through four and it'll make more sense when you see how this closes up so let's go through four only and pull your thread. Oops, <laughs> knocked off my beads. <laughs> pull your thread and hang on to it. Now you're going to add two beads. You are, so take a look at here. This is your diamond pattern here. And these are the two you're going to skip and you're going to skip the two here. So you're actually skipping five. So then you come to your middle, there's your two, your middle two is all you want to pick up on this one, like that. And pull everything tight, oh this is annoying, the beads are flinging all over the place. Okay. Doesn't look like much yet, I'll just, it'll get there. Pick up two, so you're going to skip these two, this middle one that's part of the bridge here, you're going to skip those two, and you're going to go through these two here, and only these two. So you've got your two on there, and oops, got tangled, and just keep hanging on to that. You will pull it tight. It's going to make more sense. This one, I, you know what? I I think I skipped too many, so I did the different one. I'll show you that one in a sec. Okay, so pick up two. Skip two. Skip that one. Skip two and go through these two here. Like that. So depending on how many you skip and how many you add on, it changes the design, of course. So actually this looks like the one I was trying to do and it never worked out. So that's this is interesting. Okay, so you're skipping two, skip that one here, skip those two here, and just go through these middle two here like that. And make sure your two that you add go to the front. And this is what you have. So you're going to pull this as secure as you can to create that shape. I probably should have done a different color <laughs> so you could see it. Yeah, I'll grab the one that I... Uh... So now what you want to do 
because you want this middle one to be a nice circle. And you can adjust your stuff a little to get it in the middle. So you want this to create your um, even circle. So you're going to go through all of just those beads that create that circle. You're going to go through them one more time. Tight. Tight. <laughs> so you got a different design. That was false advertising. I think you should complain to YouTube. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, that's what happens when you start creating stuff on, on the fly. So, there. That. Okay, so that's what it looks like on the back. I'm just going to kind of make sure it's positioned correctly. And there is the front. So now we can go ahead and get rid of our thread. I'm going to go down these side ones here. And I think I'm going to follow the path of these beads down here, down the side one. And down this bottom one. Let's stick that one in. There we go. Okay. And then you can put your knot. So you just take the strand. Um, I would just go through both sides like this and do a half hitch knot, I think it's called, like that, and pull it tight. And you can hide your thread through your bugle. I'm not going to. I'm going to leave this because I will most likely add this to a design. Actually, you know what? I think I will hide it so you get the idea. And it's getting hooked on the bead, the 11 -0. I kind of don't want to, but let's see. If I can... There we go. Be careful, these bugles are a bit uh, fragile, so I'm just making sure this is in the position I want it, because it will make a difference on your, on the uh, front, how your circle sits, so I'll just do that, so there we go. Okay, so that is the design with skipping to and adding to, and let me see, I have one here, it might be easier for you to see. This is the one I did on a 14 um, millimeter, and it didn't quite work well, so it was, as much as I tried to get it to go over, it didn't work well. So let's see if we can do the circle one. I think what it is, let me just look here. How many did I skip here? I only skipped one on each end. That's what it was. So we have time. Let's do another one here. I think this is enough thread. Let's do the black. So we just need four bugles, and I have black bugles too, which is cool. I've been looking for gold and silver. It's These are the colors that I have of the slenders, and I picked colors that I knew I could match with stuff, so either metallics or whites kind of idea. Um, 
I'm a little concerned this isn't enough thread, so let's get a bigger piece. You know what? I have some here that was attached to a bezel that I was working on. And this is the two millimeter, or the, the two, uh, four pound. So it's, I find it's a lot easier to work with for bezeling. Okay, now I am going to get some silver so you'll see it on this, you see what I'm doing. Okay, and here's my 11-0 silvers. Um, I had two different kinds, I think I might try this. That's probably enough. Okay. So in eleven O a bugle. Eleven O a bugle. Eleven O a bugle. Eleven O and a bugle. So that is what you have for your base. And tie it in a knot. That. I tie three knots. Um, you know, if you're concerned that your knot's going to get in the way, you might want to just do two. Two is probably good enough. Um, I just get a little bit nervous because I've had a few come apart when I pulled through. So that's why I do three. Because it's no fun when it comes apart. And my scissors are a piece of crap these days. These were new scissors that I bought and Man, they are not doing well. Okay, so let's go through this bugle. So we go to the next seed bead away from the knot. I mean, it's not going to really matter because... Oh, these are tiny. There you go. Go through. Okay, like that. Just like that. We're going to pick up three and coming out of this side, we're going to go in the opposite side. Like that. And go through the next bugle. And the next bead. Like that. Pick up three. Oops. Like that. There's the next one. Go through the next bugle. See if we can grab this seed bead. There we go. Like that. Pick up three. I think looking at this and with these black stones I think I'm going to be making a bracelet with these guys because it looks amazing just with the stuff set next to each other it's starting to look very elegant so we go through this 11-0 pick up three and avoid poking that knot. So now I'm going to go through the bugle and I will again line up these bugles together. Like that. So you go through the bugles and you skip the 11 O's.
crossed over on the bead. Oh, there's the thread at the back. For you. There. I don't want to be pulling too hard on things, but <laughs> it's not behaving. <laughs> Ooh, behave. So go through the next bugle. Like I said, these um, slenders are very delicate. Yes. There. Down here. There. That kind of worked. So I, I have seen people do this on the first step, so that might make a difference. But okay, go through the next bugle. Oh, should we pop that bead up? There. And the last one. So this is a bit repetitive, but maybe that will help you. See, now this side's tight because we were eking on it. slide this in here. This must be where the knot is. Oh, that's not good. Let me see if I can just pull it out a bit. I don't want to crack the bugle. Well, it's not going in at all. Okay, we'll skip that one. Do one more try on the back side here. Yeah, because I think once when we started pulling on it. Okay. No, I don't want to go any further. That's going to break that bugle, so it's looks pretty good okay so now let's get our thread in position so we're going to go around these beads like that up the side one here let's flip this so you can see it better this stuff is fiddly <laughs> i have to say <laughs> yeah but it's so worth it when you see what you can create. Okay, so now we are set to go. We are going to add six all the way around in between each of these little diamond patterns. So go through the top bead of the diamond pattern and grab the next six. Go through the next top one. One, two, like that. Go through the top. Your last six, go through this top one here. Pull everything in, and it creates this little kind of circle. And I'm just going to nudge these corner pieces up like that. There. Okay, let's take a look. We can put our 
crystalline now and just hold on to it. But you don't have to because it'll be loose until you get ready. Okay, so we're only going to skip one. We had skipped two. So for this one, we need to just start at the beginning because we need to come to this end. So you see our threads coming out of here, out of this bead here. So now we're going to go through one, two, three, four, and five. So you see the, we were skipping this one. This is part of the diamond shape. So we're actually skipping a total of three, but we're skipping one on each side of this diamond shape. Pick that up, pull this, and we're gonna pick up one bead. Then we're gonna go to the next. So there's the diamond shape, skip that one. Go through the next one. Okay. And we are going to skip one at the end here. Okay. So here's your diamond shape. There's that bead there. You're going to skip this one and this one. We're going to pick up one, so we're skipping this one, this one, this one, so that's kind of like three, slide in here, and there. So you're picking up four to complete your circle. And I'm just kind of sliding, the Rivoli is kind of spinning in my hand. It is a bit awkward, so it does take some hand dexterity. So I'm picking up one. I'm going to skip these three, and I'm going to go through the next four. Like that. Okay, pull it through. Okay. Now... We are going to pick up one, skip three, one, two, three, and pick up four. Do we not put the right amount on there? One, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, there it is. That's, I didn't see that one. It was hiding. So you can see this is really kind of loose right now. But look at this. <laughs> what happens? What? So we already added. So we're back around. So this is where we added that one bead and skipped these two here. So now we're going to pass through all the middle ones to create the circle. So we're going to pick up this one we added. And then go through these guys. And you can see it's starting to take shape. So just go through all of these guys. There's the added one and then the four. Like that. And now as you go through a couple of times, it's starting to get really firm. So go through the one we added and then the four. And Pull your thread towards the center of the circle. If you pull it away, it will bring the beads over. And you want them to form the circle, not break the circle. So go through these guys like that. And now you can tighten that. And that is it for the circle one so let's get our thread hidden i'm going to go back through here i don't want to go backwards so i'm going to go through this one and then i'm going to go down this side one like this then i'm going to go through this middle one 
that through the side one and down through this bottom one like that and kind of so at this point you could probably tighten this as well again just kind of move it around in your fingers to help you tighten okay so there we're set for that so I am just going to bring my needle around to do the half hitch knot like that bring that down there just hang on to it and pull it through tight like that and I'm going to go through the bead and you can put a few knots in there if you want it's not necessary See if this is one of the bad, the tight bugles. So you could hide your thread in here too. Yes. Like that, and you're set. Again, just adjust everything so it's not all funky. So let's take this off and clip it. Time to sharpen my scissors. <laughs> oh. So that is what it looks like on the back. Hold it in and there is the front. So that is how easy it is to make a circle. And this is a 12 millimeter Rivoli. It is a resin black and it looks amazing. I would love a bracelet with a bunch of these on it in a strand or you could put some other element on either side of it and then this is the one we did so this is skip one bead and this is skip two bead so you see how just doing that little thing changes your design so super easy Ta -da. so stay tuned I will definitely do some more of these guys and just Get these in frame here so you can take a little look. There you go. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for your patience. And I will definitely be doing some more of these. So um, I might try and do it with some bigger beads and a bigger Rivoli so that it's easier for you to see and for me to handle. So take care, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.